We recently took a trip to Glenorchy. Helicopters, pies, and an eco lodge were all very appealing. But another reason we were out there was to catch up with this guy, Chaz Drader, the godfather of radio. When I first arrived in 1985, it was a nice little friendly village. And we had a house up at Larchwood. We called the little house on the prairie because it was just our house and nothing else. I worked for uh, Radio Targo, it was then. In Queenstown, it was called Resort Radio. Was that the one that carted after a month? The yeah, ski, it's ski. called Ski Radio. I had sold three months worth of advertising and I had nowhere to broadcast it. So I ended up owing the bank some money, but uh, that got sorted eventually. And then did that sort of spawn the birth of Q92? When it became a full-time job, it was called QFM. Then it became 92FM. Then I merged with another company and it became Q92FM in 1992. Gee, what do you say about um, Chaz Drader? I think what you've got to give him credit for is that he took a punt many years ago on a whole host of people who had no radio experience. Chaz, you Emma. Have you ever thought about doing radio? I think I was one of those few people in history that started on breakfast and ended up doing night shows before I left, you know, going the wrong way, but, you know. When I was eight years old, I won a prize from one of their 92-hour birthdays. And um, I walked into Q92 FM to pick up the prize and... Next thing I know, at the tender age of eight, I had my own show called Jonathan's World with Alexa Forbes. And Chaz is my dad. Chaz is your dad. But I didn't grow up with him. I came here to see him on a holiday, and he was this wild, crazy radio person. And I was this um, mild-mannered, well-behaved policeman. It was a bit more raunchy than the staid, middle-of-the-road stuff that Resort Radio was doing. The 92 days were absolutely wild. We had uh, Chaz uh, with this huge personality and this huge radio back background writing off every rule book as we went. So we appealed to a younger audience, but then the younger audience grew up with us. We catered to the upwardly mobile, while well, Resort caters to the downwardly senile. That wasn't a sting, was it? You didn't have that on here? No. <laughs> the drag race, were you part of the, the birth of, of that? Yeah, I was responsible for it. <laughs> <laughs> I never took part in it though. I was, I was a judge. Because it's crazy how these respectable business people adopt a whole new demeanour after it. Just know. absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I was always just goldsmacked at who would come out of the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we did successfully every year was the Iron Kids Triathlon. The uh, Media Works manager always quoted saying they were really pleased that they got 60 entries. Oh, that's fine. We used to get 350. Radio doesn't have the same involvement that we used to have. He's a very powerful part of Radio New Zealand. He's a very profound character, Chaz Trader. And the best person to learn from. Power play, is that, is that just what's hot? It's anything that's bright and chirpy. Because I remember not knowing anything, being a wide eyed on my first sort of day on the Q92 FM, community radio, true community radio, yeah. and he came bursting in and he go, turn the f***ing mic on! And I hadn't even, Hayden was talking and I hadn't even hit the mic on. I wasn't allowed to talk on my show, it was just music that used to play all night. I remember one day when uh, this announcer was sitting there and he He'd come off the back of a song and said his bit, and then said, here's a bit of Queen. And Chaz walks into the studio and goes, hey, what do you mean a bit of f***ing Queen? It's the whole song, mate. So, here is Queen. If you haven't got anything good to say, play another f song. People don't want to hear you talk. They only want to hear the time and the songs. Have you had four marriages? Oh, did I hear Do that? I need to talk about that? <laughs> what does it look like? I guess you just can't tie down a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. And where did you start going out with? <laughs> yeah, did you, sort of, did you sort of provide the foundation for her meeting your son? He came to visit here and I took him in to see the radio station one evening when she was on air. It wasn't intentional on my part. Thursday morning, and a fairly mild morning. I wish I had his radio voice. He's got that beautiful tone. People would literally bounce up the stairs in the station building to meet him because he was that kind of wallpaper voice in their life. Was it 2010 where you 
that's when I you wrapped up in when Queenstown I, when I retired and came here but there was changes happening I said Chaz we still need you on here you know do 12th of the tour or something you know he said oh fuck I've been on the radio 40 fucking years then you know 40 <laughs> fucking years I've got nothing to fucking say nothing else just fucking say fuck that and figured I'd rather run another radio station than look out the window watching the grass grow I think there's different sort of people in the radio business now. Yeah, we hear you everywhere, you know, before movies, at readings. I watched an old episode of Ski Whiz. We'll be right back with Ski Whiz. It's still there. It's on, yeah, it's on, the, it's on YouTube. It's Holy, sh watching. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're doing the shot over Jet One. Yeah, but that would have been some time in the 90s, surely. For thrills, speed, and sheer spectacle, the shot of the jet cannot be beaten. Voice will live, but the body's dead. <laughs> right, now here's Jimmy Barnes. No sign off or anything, you just. <laughs> no. Nah. Catch you, catch you next week. Yeah. Fiona's in tomorrow. Well, I should do, but I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, today. shall we put you on the game? Because you were here. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> 